round one of the League Cup. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're not sure in truth, Jim, what team you know Steve will put out, uh, but whatever team it will be, I'm sure there'll be a lot of quality there, and you know it's in front of a, a big crowd. I think Forest have sold their allocation. We're obviously going to sell a lot of tickets, and I think reward not only for beating Crew but for for the football club in terms of you know they went through COVID times. I came in during that period. We suffered the relegation. <clears throat> We're then in in the National League, and while what it turned out to be a fantastic season. I think to to be back in the league and you know part of of the bonus of that is being involved in these cup competitions um, to, to get a Premiership team that, as you said, of I think a team and a club that a lot of people are delighted to have back in the Premier League and maybe everyone's watching with interest. Certainly for my generation and probably um, the the one before me, it's you know a massive football club that's steeped in history um, and a challenge that we, we're looking forward to. I suppose these uh, League Cup games, they're one-off uh, games, they're away from the sort of hustle and bustle of league. Uh, is your approach really to attack it from the off or do you have to be respectful and sort of cautious in how you go about it? Is there an awful lot of detail or just, just treat it as a cup final and just say, right, let's give it a dash, let's go for it? We we do the same as we would normally do. To be honest, in terms of preparation, we've looked at, at how we played so far this season, and you know, tried to highlight where we think they're particularly strong, and you know, as, as much as we can, try and say, well, there might be you know an opportunity if they play a certain way in certain areas of the pitch. But I think we have to be respectful. I think it would be extremely naive to think that we can just turn up and do exactly what we please. Uh, so we spoke about the structure of us without the ball and hopefully that can, you know, make it a, a little bit more difficult for them. Uh, but at the same time, like you say, it's a cup game. Uh, that's happened, we know that. Uh, that's happened throughout the history of, of football. And we'd love to be, you know, a team that, that causes one. So we, we want to carry a threat ourselves. The reality is we are coming up against a, an extremely talented team and whether or not we can you know, do the things that we spoke about remains to be seen. But, you know, that's certainly the intention. Here. So I guess to an overall, just to try and strike a bit of a balance between the two. And I suppose, Paul, for the club itself, it obviously relished the thought in terms of getting a big club like Nottingham Forest in terms of the finances and the revenue that will start to bring. But as a manager yourself, in terms of these cup com uh, competitions, do you prefer maybe the earlier rounds getting league position maybe advancing and then maybe meeting a big team at the last 16 or quarterfinals do you think it's if a shock's going to come it's going to come early in the cup where you look at I'd, I'd say so it seems to be the case that most of the sort of bigger clubs will play if they're going to play weaker teams it's earlier in the competition you know unless um you're absolutely one of the top teams and can still put out a so-called second string and be extremely strong. Um, that, you know, naturally, it's a bit like my experience of, of what's now the, the Papa John's. Teams tend to make a lot of changes as it gets closer to the final. You find teams, clubs suddenly, you know, probably going with the team that they would do on a, you know, maybe in a league fixture. So... Yeah, it, I think it's great to get as far as you can in the cup. This cup hasn't been kind to me <laughs> as a manager when I've been involved. Um, so just pleased to get through that first round, to be honest. Plus, Paul, in terms of uh, the league, obviously it's a rigorous sort of schedule, over 40 sort of games and sort of such. And there's always that sort of balance that you're thinking yourself well I'm out again Saturday and that's an important league game and there's points to be uh, won instead but obviously as a player sitting in that dressing room if you're starting Saturday you think to yourself wow this is Nottingham Forest on Tuesday the Premier League I want to be starting as well but is there, a, is there a hard calls to be made in terms of that is there players that are going to be knocking at your door Wednesday morning saying well you started me Saturday why aren't you starting me uh, Tuesday night uh, against Nottingham Forest or is, or do you have to think of both aspects in terms of that? Yeah, a little bit of both. You know, every player's sort of 
obviously individual case as in where they're at with their fitness, maybe age, maybe the competition in their position. Um, so uh, there will be a couple of changes. I don't mind sort of saying that um, to yourselves. But at the same time, I'm obviously, it's not like we're playing a team where we're the, the big favourite and I can make changes and, and still think we've got a great chance of winning. So the changes that I do make are still in mind of putting a team out to, to be competitive. That's, you know, you know these, the draw's great. When it first comes out, we're all, everyone's really pleased and then almost a bit of reality hits and that can be the case on the, on the night now. Like I said, what none of us want, me as manager, the players, any of the staff, is is to get sort of embarrassed. So we want to be competitive. So any changes I do make, of course, will will be still very much in mind that we've got you know a, a strong team out there, and and we try and do as best to to see if we can cause uh, Nottingham Forest some problems. Yeah, and I suppose the, the Irish element uh, in in your side, Gavin Houlihan. Uh, how important a key player is for you for the coming season? And obviously he plays a sort of attacking midfielder role that late runs into the box. So as a player like that, obviously a goal tries as well. You're, and I suppose it's important for him really to for you to have a successful season that he's hitting double figures and he provides a backup in terms of five goals off the strikers as well. Absolutely. I mean, we broke Gavin... And that was certainly part of the reason for bringing him in was uh, the goals that he'd scored uh, in his career to date, particularly in, in the National League. And he got uh, some important goals for us, a couple of you know really good finishes. As you talked about, the, the timing of his runs, he started the season very well for us. I'm sure he can be uh, be a key player. So... You know, and, and at the minute, you know, there's no hiding away from it. Goals um, haven't been easy for us to come by in, in the league, at least so far. Uh, we need to contribute from other areas of the pitch. And I think Gav's not quite managed to get on the score sheet just yet. But Saturday, he was probably as close as anyone with a, a strike from distance. He caught really sweet. On another day, that might have gone in. Uh, his goals could be, be crucial for us throughout the season. And Paul, as a young manager yourself, is, is Steve uh, Cooper someone to look up to and admire in terms of the job he's done at Nottingham Forest as well? When he took Nottingham Forest the job over, they were closer to League One than, uh, than the Premier League. And obviously, uh, in terms of where they're fighting now, they're fighting the lower half uh, since he left them as well. So is he a sort of a role model in terms of young English manager? that have come in uh, turned big clubs with sort of fortunes uh, going astray around and working with low budgets and obviously he's been successful. Is he something, someone that you look up to and admire in terms of what he's done? Absolutely. You know, he's done a fantastic job. Obviously left Swansea, um, which, you know, let, let's be honest, it wasn't because of his um, performance as manager there, realistically. Uh, but that was Nottingham Forest game, and like you said, turned that club's fortune around and got them back to, I guess, what people consider uh, the promised land. You know, I, I've got nothing against, um, you know, foreign managers or, or anything like that, but it is nice to see, um, you know, English or, or British managers get, the, I think, first and foremost, get the opportunity, uh, and then secondly, do so well. I think sometimes you can very quick to overlook people um, and, and maybe sometimes not even give them a chance. And I think in, in Steve's case, he's, he's certainly um, putting his case forward for attracting interest still. I'm sure Forrest, and I'm sure he's very happy there, um, will want him for many years to come. But if he can continue in the vein he is, then, you know, to say they might not be, um, you know, the so-called bigger clubs. Um, looking at him as well, but he's you know in Forest. I think he's joined someone that, as much as their first task will be to make sure they stay in the Premier League moving forward, and the way they're going about the business, it's clearly not just to be in there making the numbers up. It's to go and try and compete, and you know establish themselves and and try and kick on and break into the top echelons of of the Premier League. 
And I suppose as a manager yourself, Paul, uh, come Tuesday night, uh, come uh, come the game this week, actually. Uh, in in terms of do, you, do you, I, I suppose all the Grimsby fans would like to see the Jesse guards on the field. They like to see the Morgan Gibbs Whites, the forty million players, as such. I suppose as a manager, you're probably not concerned about the personnel that first have out. You'd rather rather not see them on the field, I suppose, as such. <laughs> yeah, again, that's kind of catch twenty two, isn't it? You kind of would like to, to play in one respect, and as you said, for the fans in particular. Um, but I think they've got, got enough players there in the squad now that you know it might not be the household name that people are talking about. You know, for me, kind of Dean Henderson straight away. We had Dean at, at the Prince Town Football Club before, um, didn't actually play for me at the time, was only there for a few games, and but then I took him to Shrewsbury. You know, it'd be great to see him on the pitch and playing, but I'm assuming, I might be wrong, but that he probably won't play. Uh, and, th- and there's a few more. Ryan Yates I took to uh, Shrewsbury as well. And I know he just back at the weekend came on, so maybe more of a chance of him being involved. Uh, but I wouldn't be too upset if they had quite a lot of uh, younger players on there and, and felt that our chances were, were much improved. And I suppose, lastly, for me, uh, Paul, in terms of Grinsby now, coming into the last sort of 10 days of this hectic sort of season, obviously the transfer market, the sort of such as well, in terms of resources coming up from the conference, uh, in terms of League Two as well, are you very much looking at the sort of loan market in terms of championship clubs, in terms of youngsters? in terms of Premier League clubs to get a, a sort of ex- experience as well or is it very much trying to look around the conference or the fellow League Two opposition clubs to sort of pick up players or is it a different sort of market or a, bo- a ball league than clubs maybe in League Championship or top tier League One clubs like Ipswich or Sheffield Wednesday be operating in? I think, yeah, it's definitely different than those clubs but for ourselves, we you know we've had some loans before that have worked extremely well at various clubs. I think at League Two level, we're probably not going to get the pick of the bunch that you would be the sort of first choices, certainly from Premiership clubs uh, and and some Championship clubs. But we ser- I'm certainly open minded to it. I've had some players that have had first loans, which I think there are some managers out there that won't take that risk. I'm I'm not against it if I feel it's it's the right type of player and, and right type of character. Uh, I think that's really important, whether or not they, they, you feel they can handle that change of environment. And, you know, we're the best in the world. We want to try and play decent football, but it will be different. You know, our game at the weekend was a prime example of that. So we, we're looking at all all places, Jim, to be honest. I, I'm quite open-minded. That. Um, we, we can perhaps get a couple in on, on permanent deals, uh, as well, so the, the the sort of net is is very wide at the minute. Uh, but certainly, we go in and take the games in. I'm actually going to watch Forest tonight. The twenty ones might give me a smaller idea of of who might be involved tomorrow. If certain players aren't involved, so I'll go in and long and take that. And you're always trying to see if anyone catches your eye and either you know make a move for someone or certainly put them on a list to to keep monitoring. And I suppose, lastly, for me, finally, um, after the game, obviously, you mentioned that, uh, the 20 game, and obviously, it gives you the chance, maybe after the game, no matter the result, maybe to maybe sit and maybe have a quick chat with Steve as well, and maybe start to feel the market and maybe get one or two tips of advice, build connections as well going forward, I imagine. Yeah, the, the, the impact will always be there. Uh, if he wants to come up for a drink afterwards, he's certainly more than welcome, him and his staff. Um, I can't say that there'll be an expensive bottle of red wine there for him, but there'll certainly be a drink of some kind if he wants one. And he looks always nice to chat. And, you know, I think what you often find is these people, yeah, they're managing higher up the leagues, but they're just good people more often than not. They're passionate about the, uh, the sport that we're involved in. And, you know, more often than not, very happy to kind of share their thoughts and, you often find these probably have a lot of the same frustrations. It's just a, a higher level. Um, but yeah, it'd be good if we could get a catch up afterwards. Uh, cheers, Paul, and best of luck. Thanks very much, Jim. Thank you.